Hello, everybody. Hello. Good evening. So, um, you were here at Cape Media Center's, well, technically it's our second open mic night, but it's the first of this series of open mic nights. We're going to be making these a, a sort of quarterly thing. So uh, the next one will probably be in January, and I hope you all can make it again. Uh, there's a couple things I need to talk about, uh, a couple things I need to mention before we get started. Um, first of all, very important, fire exits. It's right behind you, and it essentially goes straight out, uh, straight outside behind the building. So very important. Let's hope there's no fires, though. Um, also, you, everybody needs to be off the, like, you need to be in your car and out of here by nine because it's a res residential area. Sorry. <laughs> Also, this is the Cape Media Center, which is uh, Channel 99 here in Barnstable, Yarmouth, Dennis, Harwich, and Chatham, which also means that this show is being recorded and will be shown on Channel 99 as well as on our YouTube page. So if you want to see that, that's where you can see it. Uh, finally, like I said, this is the Cape Media Center, so what do you do here? You can use this stage for anything. We have green screens. You can become a member and uh, get training for uh, video editing and other production type things. We have like a podcasting room, stuff like that. It's a really cool place. So I already said that we're planning on doing more of these. It'll expand. We're hoping to make food part of the next one, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this one. So. <laughs> Uh, let's get started with our first uh, performer, who is, shouldn't walk away from the microphone. Our first performer is Don Barry. Don Barry. Thank you very much. As he was saying, this is a residential area, and I'm actually one of the residents. I live right around the corner, so I'd like to play a couple of songs that I wrote, get going here, and then I'll tell you a story. Well, I make a good wage and I have a nice cave. I got all the women I need for a man my age. Well, I'm staying pretty clean and I'm living kind of lean. Mostly I get to say exactly what I mean. But it's taking time to get here been quite a ride some dreams made it some dreams but I'm happy to be here happy to be here happy to be here yes I'm happy to be here Music is my wine I'd stay drunk all of the time But this river of life keeps flowing So you know I gotta keep it rowing Well I know what I know Don't like the cold Pack up all my bags and to the Southland I will go. Hard work, I don't mind, but it takes all my time. If my job had lips, it could kiss my ass goodbye. But it's taken time to get here. Been quite a ride. Some friends made it. Some friends But I'm happy to be here, happy to be here, yes I'm happy to be here, happy to be right here. Hi, thank you so much. 
I am happy to be here. Although these days, you know, it's happy to be anywhere. I used to live up near Boston. I moved down to the Cape a couple years ago with the um, pandemic happening and all that. We decided, my wife and I decided to move into our house that we have right down here, right off Shad Hole Road someplace here. And I've been playing music uh, for, I was figuring out, over 50 years now. Um, been writing songs probably for not quite that long. I was a um, more of an instrumentalist, a bass player, a string bass player, that big thing, and um, played around for a number of years. But now I'm, I'm out here playing guitar, and I'm, I'm lucky to get a couple of um, shows at a few local locations um, in the area here, and I hope to do more over the next couple of years. Um, this is a great place, the Cape Media Center. It's just a wonderful facility, great people running it, and a, and a really good opportunity for me to come down here and play some of my original songs, which can be kind of hard to do other places. I think I do one that I wrote a few years back. Uh, I have family down in Pennsylvania, and I don't know if you remember that out west in Pennsylvania, they um, started putting holes in the ground and pumping uh, steam into it and pulling out the oil. And, uh, you know, like everything that happens, it has sort of its good and its bad sides. But uh, it's uh, quite, caused quite a change out in the western part of Pennsylvania, I'll say that. This town, so small, coffee shop is the town hall. This town, so small, everybody just knows it all. Milltown had its day, all the jobs moved away. I drive the mail truck in this town, and I know my way around. And I know just where this is going. And I know it's not for me. Big oil, come to town, gonna put little holes in the ground. Big money, spread around, gonna fix the whole damn town. Phone calling, door knocking, battle lines are drawn. Some folks win, others pay, can't stop change anyway. But I know just where this is going. And I know it's not for me. The town folk need the money. Nothing in this life comes for free. Clear the trees, build the roads, but I know it's not for me. This town was small, but now we've got it all. New roads, new places, new stores, new faces, new troubles, new rules. New bosses, new fools, new jobs, new money, new water, taste funny, but I know just where this is going, and I know it's not for me, and I'm thinking it's time to leave. Thank you. That song's called uh, This Town. This Town. And there's a lot of those little towns out there where things have changed. But, let's see, it's kind of funny. I've written a, a couple of albums worth of songs, but I haven't actually put out an album yet. And now I'm sitting there thinking, what song should I do next? <laughs> so, 
when you go on a trip as a musician, and I used to tour a bit, um, playing for some not too famous people, but traveling around quite a bit, you, um, sometimes you write a song instead of taking pictures because that's the way you really capture the essence of what happened. So <clears throat> a couple of years I was on this tour with a great group of people from, um, from Wapekad Island Records. They hired me as the bass player, and uh, we did this thing called the Rolling Roots Review Tour. And this is the song that came out of it. Head south from Boston into the spring, gray turning green, ground softening, warm winds are blowing, sun's on my face, winter's in the rearview mirror, put in its place. And I'm road ready, ready to see whatever these roads are ready to show me. Memphis to Saginaw, we're driving to sing. Don't cry, darling, I'll be back with the spring. Now Philly to Carolina is an all-night drive. Follow those truckers down I-95. No tell motels, towels thin as bed sheets. New friends, new couches, catching up on sleep. And I'm road ready, ready to see whatever these roads are ready to show me. Memphis to Saginaw, we're driving to sing. Don't cry now, darling, I'll be back with the spring. But the road doesn't travel the way that you think. Time passes so slowly, then it's over in a wink. Many places I have called home, but many are the times I needed to roam. Memphis to Boston is so far apart. I might have stayed longer if you knew my true heart. But I'm road ready, ready to see whatever these roads are ready to show me. Memphis to Saginaw, we're driving to sing. Don't cry, darling, I'll be back with the spring. Don't cry now, darling, I'll bring back the spring. Thank you so much. Um, I assume that I got time for another song. <laughs> so, here's a funny trip song story. I had some people in my life that were uh, moved down to Florida to enjoy themselves for the sort of the final or the, the last chapter. We know how that is. And uh, it was an aunt and an uncle. And they're the great, some of the greatest people I knew. And, and they inspired me to write this one for them. Well, he drives the car because she can't see the road. And she turns on the radio, he can't hear. She asks, did you see that? He says, what? They've been that way for a couple of years. Well, they've been together so long, they don't need to talk. But they talk a lot every day. One word, one look, one touch says so much. Well, they talk 
in their own way. And 50 years they've been together And he made her laugh every day But nobody can see into their future Someone gonna go, someone stay Well, every year they took a little trip to the islands Drink the rum, play in the sun Stop the clock, live on island time But they know someday will come And he makes sure their affairs are in order She won't have to worry when he's gone But one day she come home from the doctor Doctor say she don't have very long But 50 years they had together And he made her laugh every day But nobody can see into the future Someone gonna go, someone stay So many things he can remember they're like pictures from somebody else's life he goes down to the beach to feel the water he feels his heart go out with the tide with the tide it wasn't supposed to happen this way He was November, she was May He misses her laugh every day Someone go, some would stay And nobody can see into their future No Someone gonna go, someone stay Hey, someone go Someone stay Someone go Someone stay That's the way Thank you very much. So I've really enjoyed my time here. Thank you very much for having me at Cape Cod Media Center. And uh, looking forward to uh, seeing the broadcast someday and seeing all the other performances that are coming up. Um, and I think my time is done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, thank you, Don. That was great. Up next is some poetry from Vincent. Uh, Vincent, how do I pronounce your name? Uh, yeah, Vincent, last name. Yeah. Jodis. Yeah. Vincent Jodis, up next. Hi. As I was introduced, my name is Vincent. I am an amateur poet that lives here in the Cape. And I am here to read a poem called Apple on a Tree. I wrote it when my girlfriend in high school dumped me and it actually is her favorite poem now and her brother. So I read it to her a year afterwards and she just loved it. So there's always that, right? <laughs> so here it goes. Here I am, an apple on a tree. Sitting on the tree, I watch other apples getting picked. As apples are getting picked, I wonder, why am I not being picked? Is there a spot in me that is brown? Am I too small, too big? 
misshapen. Although I don't get picked, at least I have my other Apple friends on the branch of me. But one day, I do finally get picked. And things were great. Things have never been better. But of course, good things can only last so long. And my picker put me on the ground. And now I was a sold, cold apple on a dark, cold ground. Far from my picker, far from my friends in the branch, far from anything I knew, and far from anything I used to know. And as I sit on the ground, I wonder, can I ever be picked again? That's it. Thank you, everyone. That was Vincent, Vincent Jodis. Uh, thank you. Up next is Patricia Garnett with an original story. Thank you. I have a trip story with no song to go with it. And I can't see it without these. Before the trip, we worried that we wouldn't be compatible traveling companions. We had spent only a few minutes together now and then with our mutual friend, Jerry. We knew we came from very different backgrounds and had different expectations in life, but it was only a week and it was vacation. The desire for a midwinter adventure and the need to escape, the cold and the snow, that feeling yoked us together from the first suggestion that such a trip was possible. We would be Thelma and Louise, driving the Florida Keys in a snazzy convertible, the wind in our hair, sunshine on our faces, and Eric Clapton on the sound system. Even if the road trip didn't meet our expectations, the freedom alone would be delicious. No jobs, no kids, no phones. That'll tell you how long ago this was. No responsibilities, no schedule. A real dictionary-defined vacation. After an evening of wine and going over our guidebooks together and lots of independent web surfing, we decided there were too many choices to choose from. So we chose to make airline reservations to Miami and leave the rest to serendipity. When we get hungry, thirsty, tired, or bored, we would find the necessary fulfillment. The physical adventure turned out to be wonderful. We went snorkeling in turquoise water, went jet skiing along canals lined with the homes of the rich and yachted, ate grouper in French, Cuban, and South American restaurants, and celebrated the setting of the sun as if it would never return. The better adventure, however, was learning about each other and about ourselves through the eyes of a new friend. Tony was newly divorced, newly on her own. She was accustomed to having her decisions made for her and going along so as not to make waves. Many years of making my life the way I want it made me barely aware of the wake I left behind. For longtime friends, it would seem a good match, but in trying to make a new friend, I tried to be more receptive to what she wanted. When asked to make the next move, Tony was at first perplexed, then indecisive, then exhilarated. It seems that there was a take charge lady in there after all. She wanted to stay up and boogie all night long in biker bars and sleep through breakfast. She wanted to stay one night in the most expensive resort in Key West, get pedicured and massaged. She wanted to not blow dry her curly hair into a neat middle-aged lady hairdo. I like to watch the sky lighten from blues to golds in early morning, but not on my way home from a bar. Paying it for paying to, sorry, paying to be fawned on at a spa was too decadent for my taste. Still, with the wind in our hair, carefree attitude, it didn't hurt me to go along with Tony's plans. I enjoyed watching her test her independence. It was freeing for me to do things that I never did before. And freedom was our vacation plan, the part where I learned something about myself. Eric Clapton sounds just as good from the passenger seat. I'm afraid of spiders, Tony confessed as we opened the door to our first motel room on the trip to the Florida Keys. I thought that was one of those statements you make to a new friend when you're trying to find common bonds. 
but her next words were a request that I search the room for spiders before one found her. That night and every night for that week before we get comfortable for the night, I pulled the covers off her bed, shook her pillows out, pulled the bed away from the wall, looked under the bed, and pronounced the room bug-free. Sometimes I told little lies. Then I jumped into my own uninspected bed and went to sleep. When the Harley drivers asked us the next morning if their noise, if their noise woke us up during the night, I thought that was their way of apologizing for the rumble of the big bikes they rode. However, they were referring to the ambulance that came to take one of them to the hospital after a scorpion had a midnight snack on his butt. They had caught the little biter and they had him in a jar. They thoughtfully showed him to us, so I'd know what to look for now that Tony had a new demon for me to scout out. He was about two inches long, and I was fascinated with his curly tail. Tony was in the car gunning the engine already. I didn't know if I wanted to ride with a woman in that frame of mind. Five uneventful days and nights went by as far as bug hunting was concerned. Added to my bed checking routine, I now shook shower curtains, waved towels around, and looked inside toilet paper rolls. Tony asked at every front desk about the insect controls used, and I chose to believe that none of our resorts had ever seen or heard of any critters on their property. Still, if Tony would rest more easily after I hunted for anything with more than two legs, I didn't mind doing it. It was turning into a running joke with anyone we spoke to. Do you have any wildlife in your room? It was a great icebreaker. On day six, we were getting ready for a sunset celebration at a dock near our pretty Caribbean-inspired hotel in Key Largo. Tony was running the shower while I relaxed with the TV news after my bathroom scrutiny. Her shrieking that there was a scorpion in the bathroom was followed by her running through the living room, clutching her nightshirt to her naked chest, then escaping out the front door. I thought in disgust, this chick is going to see scorpions in her sleep. I now apologize for my doubts. A scorpion six inches long was coiled in the corner behind the toilet, enjoying the cool bathroom floor. After the crowd that came to see the naked lady trying to get into her locked car, they dispersed and she went to get the manager. She wouldn't stay in the room alone with the creature. While I went, and of course we couldn't go together, someone had to stay and make sure it didn't go anywhere. The manager, when he came in, pointed out the phone in the corner that we could have used, and he walked out holding the squirming scorpion by the tail. Sunset was spectacular again, our room was free, and I tried to convince Tony that there couldn't be another spidery thing around, but she couldn't sleep. She kept saying, it's just my luck. If there was going to be a scorpion anywhere, it would be my room. It's just my luck. I slept well, thinking that I was pretty lucky. She could have been afraid of elephants. But then the room surveillance would have taken less time. Thank you. Again, that was Patricia Garnett, uh, one of my favorite people in the world, actually. Also my Nana. Um, OK. We have another poet up next, and this one is Robert Siege, performing his piece, All Things in Time. It's an honor to perform for you. And with the minimum of preparations, we'll be ready momentarily to share this latest composition. It's part of a series where I reinterpret and contemporize patriotic themes with spoken word and avant-garde instrumentation. This piece entitled, All Things in Time, examines the teeth gnashing and the breeding of contempt of our current climate of political discourse in this country. So uh, with a minimum of preparations, I give you All Things in Time.
God hath wrought, Christ's blood hath bought, all things in time, all things in time. But if they're late, we'll have to wait. All things in time, all things in time. And yeah, but still, anyhow, chill, all things in time. All things in time, it's best eaten cold. And then behold, all things in time. All things in time. Till then, my friend, Afuitazan, all things in time. All things in time. All things in time. All things in time. Again, that was Robert Siege performing his piece, All Things in Time. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> so once again, thank you, Robert. And up next is a band this time. Chris Porter and Ron Cabell from God's Redeemed. Okay, so we have a few songs um, we like to do. Um, we hope you like these songs. Chris is actually going to introduce these songs. Yeah. First one is called Amen. If you've seen uh, a certain film by Sidney Poitier from 1963, which I think was called Willie's in the Field. Yep, he won an Oscar for that role. Yeah, this song actually goes back to the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, with uh, I think around the Edwin Hawkins singers and somewhere around that time. Um, the name of the song is Amen. 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 See the little baby. Wrapped in a manger Amen. on a Christmas morning. Amen. 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 Riding through Jerusalem. Amen. And the waving palm branches. Amen. In pomp and splendor. Amen. 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 See him at the seashore. Amen. Talking to the fishermen Amen. and making them disciples. Amen. 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 See him in the garden. Amen. Praying to his father. Amen. In deepest sorrow. Amen. 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 Before a pilot. Amen. Then they crucified him, Amen. but he rose on Easter, Amen, 
second song is on God's Magnificence. God's Magnificence. And this is from, um, we first sang this roughly around 2014, 2015. And after this, after we, we sing this song, Chris will tell you a little bit more about it. This is God's Magnificence. The passion and love of Christ is magnificent. Turns death into life. Magnificent God's word is true His word is for you The passion and love of Christ Is magnificent The power of Jesus Christ Is magnificent Turns darkness into light Magnificent God has a plan for you his word is true. The power of Jesus Christ is magnificent. Confessing your sins to God is magnificent. Asking God to forgive your sins is magnificent. Receiving Christ into your heart is God's plan for you. Confessing your sins to God is magnificent. Turning away from your sins is magnificent. Living your life with Christ is magnificent. He is here for us now, wants to make a way for us. Turning away from your sins is magnificent. The passion and love of Christ is magnificent. Turns death into light. God's word is true, his word is for you, the passion and the love of Christ is magnificent. He is here for us now, wants to make a way for us, we can't live without God's magnificence. He is here for us now, wants to make a way for us, we can't live without God's magnificence. We can't live without God's magnificence. Thank you. Okay, so that was an original song, um, probably from around 2014, 2015. Actually, I think. about um, 13, brother. <clears throat> 2013? Yes, about 2013. It's at least nine years old. And then our last song, uh, it's actually a, a really very well-known song. It's a great sing-along song. It's from Irving Berlin. Irving Berlin, uh, God Bless America. You can so. even join us if you want to, for those who know the words. <laughs> oh, God bless America. with all, oh God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Oh God bless America. And guide her through the night with 
Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah. Up next is my good friend, Jamie Horton, with some poetry. Jamie? I can't follow that. All I've got is gloomy poetry. Anyways, I'll try to get through this. Right. Well, tis the season for gloomy poetry, right? Anyways. Um, so my name's Jamie. I am, well, I work here. I'm the training coordinator. So if you want to make your own television shows, sign up. Um, don't base the quality of my poetry on the rest of my uh, work ethic. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I've got two original poems, and then I'll be reading uh, from one of my favorites, or reciting, because I forgot the book at home. But I think I have them memorized, but we'll find out. We'll find out together. Uh, <clears throat> so this first poem, I'm a fan of the classics. I'm a fan of John Keats, uh, Emily Dickinson, uh, William Shakespeare, Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe, more about him later. Uh, and uh, I try to kind of like write in their style, so I try to write about things in kind of a mythological way. So this is my Ode to the Moon. Yon glorious moon, nocturnal seer, yon gray eye of Artemis, silent huntress, little escapes thy watchful gaze with thy slow blinking orb of dutiful scrutiny, aloof from the passions that move mortals, yet moving mortals as thou dost the greater waters, crashing and splashing upon the shores, revealing the ocean's mysteries. When thy gaze doth fall upon me, as upon all, secrets like shadows are banished. Yon moon, I pour this libation to thee. May thy truth-seeking eye ever shine. Thank you. Uh, this next poem I wrote because I couldn't think of a poem to write. Uh, when I dabbled in uh, uh, necromancy, I was searching for a kind of spell that would undo writer's block um, so I could magically free myself from all of the uh, inhibitions, uh, lack of creativity, those kind of demons as I visualized them in my mind. Uh, and I couldn't find a spell uh, that could undo it, uh, so I wrote my own. 
This is the litany against fiends that bringeth writer's block. Vampiric villains that dryeth my quill, haunting me, taunting me, sapping my will, turning my churning mind to stagnant fen. When I believeth ye gone, ye cometh again. Ye robbeth me hourly of my true potential, ye minions of yon contemptible devil. Imp by imp, I verily call thee. By these names, stand forth and attend me. Self-loathing, hesitancy, lethargy, lassitude, uncertainty, and inhibition, a baneful brood. Lo, no further devilry shall ye commit. Rise now obediently and fall to the pit. No more shall ye desiccate my verdant mind. Life's now pure potential, my dreams unconfined. Thank you. Now we find out if I have these other poems memorized. Spooky. Um, so this is a work by Edgar Allan Poe. This is his um, uh, epic poem, a lamentation, called Annabel Lee. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child, and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, that a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee. So her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me to keep her in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in the sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. Thank you. Well, I'll leave you one, one more poem. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment, that were wont to set the table on a roar? None now to mock your own grinning, quite chop-fallen? Now go you to my lady's chamber, tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this office must she come and make her laugh at that. Thank you. That was Jamie Horton, uh, super cool guy. I don't know if you guys know him, but uh, great guy. Um, and a good poet, too. <laughs> you should see his, uh, his improv, maybe next time. Now, up next tonight is David Baker with some stand-up comedy. Well, good evening, everybody. And admittedly, it's, it was a little bit of a surprise when, uh, w until uh, Christian over there DM'd me. I completely forgot about it. And it was, I guess, a little bit of sim similar to the last time we had an open mic night. Mm, only difference was that I was wearing a black hoodie and black jeans, so I looked like I came straight from the funeral of a SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> and as of uh, uh, lately, and dealing with some, dealing with a bunch of different things that are inherently funny, but it's hard to make jo jokes about them just based on how well that that they will land, which I guess is how comedy is supposed to work, and not just the type of thing a, a podcaster says to puff up his his mid odds shock jock humor, and. I mean, it's hard to inflict the uh, afflict the comfortable when it's just random jokes about your mm, mm, 
girlfriend eating something where her stomach disagreed with it. Okay, and so, and as of lately, I, I've been try, uh, through this uh, search of sorts. Like I've been looking through ver various types of things where it's like not necessarily punching down humor. It's more humor that's obviously uh, making fun of people who should really know better. Like for example, you know those and seek out like you know, mid aughts mm, yeah, entertainment sort of thing like. Things like oh, world's dumbest criminals or dumb, world's dumbest performers, those sorts of things. Or just like YouTube where it's like the type of joke was like, mm, what strikes fear in the heart of your opponent? Making them hear your slam poetry for three hours. And the, those sorts of things. And combine that with the with a little bit of a version of the, the spotlight, not like openly uh, shine, shining it, but more that whenever I go up here, it's gonna play like the uh, the finale of some some Oscar bait movie when the, where the lead actor goes full ham into a descent of madness. And, and that's not necessarily funny. So let me just let's see if we. I suggest you pull up your phone and picture uh, pull up a picture of a dog wearing a hat. And so, so with these uh, sorts of, and uh, and Emily uh, ends up opening the, not necessarily the, let the less. Not necessarily less pleasant side of me, but more the less cheerful. Which, speaking as someone who's kind of an introvert, is really saying something. And and it's the type of thing where it's like, love it. Mm. Love the comedy is is very visual because. Well, without wanting to sound like a pretentious comedy podcast, like so sometimes humor just works better when, uh, when when you see with your when when the stupidity is is obvious to anyone with two eyes, a functioning brain, and a and a mindset that's not on the graft. And with these sorts of sorts of things, and especially with the uh, sports in general and in football in particular, mainly this is the uh, I should add with a caveat ca caveat that I was never a Patriots fan, so well, we, these sorts of things are it's like various different things like uh, really stupid logo redesigns and people saying profoundly uh, stupid things on Twitter or in or in one case, a, a quarterback being accused by his ex of sleeping with his mom's best friend. Yes, I'm not making that up. And and so, to honestly uh, wrap this sort of thing up, it's very much more of an idea of like, I really don't, don't really like uh, it. Yeah. I hope this isn't seen as insulting my, my audience here, but it's just more of uh, feeling at the wrong end of both a power imbalance and a generation gap where you're surrounded, you feel surrounded by a mentality that is, that is stuck in the 80s, both in terms of like the plastic nostalgia and the uh, uh, seeing people uh, 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 gravitate to a way too sen sentimental uh, gripping of every type of past where, where honestly, Ken and Barbie dolls look more authentic than the people on screen. And on that pleasant note, I know this was stand-up comedy, but this... 
the type of thing that's about as, uh, about as funny as cancer. So let's just wrap things up with a little funny dance. And that was David Baker. Thank you, David. All right. Before we get to our next poet, who um, is also somebody who I'm a big fan of, I'm going to read a bit of a story to you guys, everybody out there. This is not a story that I would like to perform in front of my grandmother, but she is here. Or my boss, actually, or all three of my bosses are here and my grandmother, but that's okay. In a normal suburb, like any other, two young philosophers traveled the land, visiting ancient meccas of self-observation, such as Taco Bell, Panda Express, and Burger King. They would ask each other questions like, do deaf people think in Braille? Are we all the same person reincarnated? Why is the alphabet arranged as it is? And what's so special about bees' knees anyway? But none of these hypothetical questions ever provoked much discussion after the conversation was had. Well, except the ancient quandary. If you traveled back in time to do it with yourself, is that gay or just masturbation? <laughs> the philosophers initially brought up this story, uh, this question over a couple cartons of chicken fries and dropped it. But the next day, the question came again. They did not stop, sorry. This questioning did not stop after two occurrences nor three, four, or five but this quiz happened over all foods. Veggie burgers, enchiladas, avocado toast, boba tea, Doritos Locos Tacos, and enchiladas again. It has to be gay because it's you from the future. It's not right now, it has to be. But it's just masturbation because it's still you. But surely it has to be gay because it wouldn't be masturbation if it was your identical twin. Twins are close, but this is clearly not the same thing. This is different. On the 10th night of these discussions, the philosophers had both brought printed theses to one of their basements to finally put this to rest. Despite pulling all-nighters and engaging in extensive research, they still found themselves at a standstill. The philosophers decided that there were no true answers to be had and had called a permanent truce, at least until time machines were invented. One philosopher suggested grabbing some sophisticated foods, as usual, when they finally joked about and shrugged off the whole discussion. They decided that it was neither gay or masturbation, but was simply impossible. At that very moment, a crack formed in the air and a loud bang sounded through the basement as a glowing portal appeared. And two extremely familiar people stepped through the light to address the philosophers. The mysterious visitors had a certain philosophical aura about them as they spoke in unison to their past selves. We brought the lube. <laughs> Thank you. Now, up next is our final guest of the night, Tamora Israel, or, as her friends know her, T. Uh, so my name's Tamora. I'm going to read some poetry tonight that I wrote. Um, yeah, let's hop into it. Why not? Let's do it. All right, so the first poem I'm going to read is called Optimist. wanted to check to make sure. This feels tall. I mean, it feels like too short for me. I'm going to grow one day. It can still happen. I have faith. Why'd you? That's not funny. This, I can still grow. I can still, right? Right? You guys are so quiet. I can... I believe in it, it's gonna happen. All right, so this one is called Optimist. I was born an optimist, but the optical illusion of progress confused me, so I became a cynic profusely because falling soothes me. And yeah, I know the word vomit's hard to swallow, but stay with me through the shadows. Where I'm going, you're gonna wanna follow, but fasten your seatbelts, my rabbit hole comes with a kick and a throttle. And at the end of the day, when the record is played, we choose to evade the karma we've laid, but everybody gets paid, right? The truth will not be slain. It thrives in our veins like blood in the sand, like a hooker in church, like a mother with a plan and a child with a curse. The things that we say can never be reversed. So make sure, so make sure, so make sure you rehearse because love is a contract and it comes with a clause. We're all just people and we all have flaws. But at the end of the day, the only words that matter are yours. 
Your words matter. Let's be kind to each other. Thank you. Um, I wrote that a couple years ago, and I like to start things off with that poem because it's kind of like, like my feel-out poem, you know, like my, how's this going to go? Feel it out a little bit. Um, so the next poem is called Damn, and uh, Victor, it's kind of like your breakup poem, poem a little bit. Um, I get a little saucy in it, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So this is called Damn. Is it? Okay, I'm just, I be moving a lot, so can I move this over? I'm so surprised. Okay. It, it was the floor. It was driving me nuts. Okay. Uh, what did I say? Damn, right? Right? Yeah. Listen, <laughs> you owe me more than deuces and a sad face. I'm in a bad place. Ain't no tracks laid. Just a train grinding forward headed this way. You behave now. Slow it down, child. I know you're anxious to change your profile. Oh, you're single now. On the prowl. Uh, is that my confidence that your ego's wrapped around? So I'm a little bitter, so I'm a little pissed, but hey, kudos to the next chick that benefits off my investment. That love got the best of us. It appealed to our broken parts. We found the glue to mend ourselves individually, ignoring this shivering promise, this broken entity we entered into freely. There are casualties in every war. I just wish I knew we were battling over the heart, open-handed grappling from the start. We were passionate, personal. Now, everything is hard and emotional. But don't trip. Nah, this loss ain't gonna catch me out. I'ma land on my feet, I'ma catch me out. I'm done with all the bullshit, got too much to offer. Never again will I make myself smaller. My word is my bond, my name is my shield. I'm a grown ass woman, these scars will heal. My superhero pose is keeping me composed. Win or lose, I know that I was made for every stage I step on, including this one. Thank you. Got a little bit in my feelings. I feel better though. Uh, I had a Kit Kat. I don't know why that makes me laugh. It's just so silly. Um, so the last poem I'm gonna do is Strong Woman. And I really like this poem because um, I wrote it at a very like vulnerable point in my life. And I was just like, what's tomorrow? Would it, will things ever be better? You know when you get like just stuck in that moment and you just kind of like in quicksand or you know, stuck in the ocean and trying to swim to shore and the waves just keep pulling you back. So I wrote that poem, I wrote this poem, to try to like get to shore. And that's, that's kind of what that means to me. I'm gonna drink some water though, cause it's like a desert in here. Was that you, Jamie? Oh. <laughs> okay, this one is called Strong Woman. Hi, I'm looking for a woman, a strong woman. I left her not too far from here. I left her near the exploding emotions, but honestly, I figured she could handle it. She's carried her fair share of unpinked grenades, threw them at the enemy, then played hot potato with the remains. She's a professional. She knows how the game is played, the ins and outs. Her expertise is executing plan B, or C, or D, or E. So, where is she? Strong woman, if you can hear me, I've been looking everywhere for you. I want to start with an apology. I asked you to hold the weight of the world like you were popping Tic Tacs. The severity of the ask was lost in the need, but I need you now, strong woman. I need your help. I need the hands that have twirled humanity with her fingertips, the arms that remain open after trust has been broken, the shoulders that have carried tragedies for centuries but never faltered. Strong woman, she's more Lilith than Eve. From cradle to the grave, she was born to lead. She tattooed the S on her chest. Because unlike Superman, there's no phone booth. There's no time to change. The world waits not for her to test her strength. She bobs and weaves when she's in the ring, protects her face, keeps perspective in place, and while standing at the base of her mountain, she collects herself, looks up, and prays with each step believing that endurance plus heart times intuition equals progress. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm spending too much time skipping down a yellow brick learning curve. My mind's messed up. I'm lost. Just want to be heard. Strong woman, strong woman, where you at? When you get this message, hit me back.
thank you guys so much for putting on this open mic. And we have another open mic community production at uh, Caribbean Lounge next Thursday. Lounge next Thursday, uh, starting at six o'clock, and it's a costume contest because we're nerds. So come join us. And thank you very much to uh, the Media Center for putting this event together. Thank you again, Tamora. That was awesome, as always. Um, you know, I'll tell a story before I wrap this up. Uh, the day I met Tamora was actually the last open mic night. So um, I, I don't know what that means, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> and now we're friends. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for performing. For just, I hope you enjoyed the show. I enjoyed the show. Um, there's a couple things before, uh, again, I guess I already said that, but, um, so we have a gallery on the way out that I think you should all check out. Uh, we have three artists, um, all of them, you've actually seen two of them on this stage today. Uh, there's myself, uh, but there's also Jamie and another one of our friends here at the media center, uh, Dave. We all have, um, we all have paintings or drawings up on the way out. And if any of you are visual artists, let us know and you can be in the gallery as well. So we're always trying to get more gallery people. So that's why I brought it up here. Anyway, that's everything I have to say. I hope you all enjoyed the open mic. I know I did. Thank you for coming. <laughs>